Kia ora tato kato. I call the Honourable John Banks. Mr Speaker, let's start with one indisputable fact and one act party proposition. The indisputable act is that 49.9% of every dollar spent in New Zealand was spent by the government or an agency of the government. 50 cents in every dollar. Act believes, and now the proposition, Act believes that taxpayers can spend their money better than any politician or collective group of politicians in this party. We believe that hard-working New Zealanders can spend their money better than anyone in this parliament. There are many good things in this budget. Compared to the budgets Labor used to give us, Compared to the budgets Labor gave us, particularly for the last four years of the Helen Clark government, this is a very sound and sensible document. Under Labor, Mr Speaker, another indisputable fact, under Labor, core Crown expenditure increased from $35 billion to $64 billion from 2000 to 2009. That's $29 billion increase over nine years. Total expenditure under this Act Party supported government has ridden only eight billion in four budgets. Beneath that headline figure are many good stories this government is doing with less. This government clearly understands that the proposition from the other side of the House today that you can borrow more and spend more and tax more is going to get us out of our small corner of the world in the global recession is mistaken. The welfare reforms for which Act Party has long campaigned are a welcome change. After 20 years of no inflation adjustment, raising the price of prescriptions by $2 is just common sense. It frees up taxpayers' money and improves incentives for using medicines well. The parliamentary opposition would say, let's go to the Crown account and borrow more money each week to fund everything that everyone thinks they need. We in the ACT Party are hopeful that this budget heralds the new beginning of a new era in education, an era where we accept that teachers can make a difference and we pay for them to make a difference. We believe that teachers can make a difference and we want to pay teachers to make a difference. The announcement that will fine-tune the Public Finance Act is very good news. Fine-tuning of the Public Finance Act. New Zealand has a growing tradition of better fiscal performance through better financial reporting, and that goes back to the 1990 government when I sat over there in the 1990 government. This budget makes major beneficial additions to those traditions. Now, the Treasury produces, I want the opposition to listen to this because it's critical stuff. The Treasury produces a triennial 40 year forecast of New Zealand finances. The first one in 2006 was called New Zealand's long term fiscal position in 2006. Treasury predicted that if we carried on business as usual, if we carried on with a Helen Clark government and a Michael Cullen financial ministry, then by 2050 we'd end up with government debt of 106% of GDP. That's exactly where Greece was. That's exactly where Greece was before the collapse. The next report in 2009, Mr Speaker, makes more interesting reading. It's called Challenges and Choices. That report said that under spending patterns present in 2008 and 9, we'd be at least 223% of public debt by 2050. 223. Under this budget, budget and this National Party government supported by ACT and my other friends here in this coalition, we will well and truly have all of that structural debt repaid by then. We won't be 223 per cent public debt by 2050. This is the beginning of saving our great-grandchildren yet born, having to foot the bill and the interest costs of massive debt that the Labor Party and their friends over there would ramp up on their backs. The message is clear. 
if we return to spending patterns of the previous decade of Labor governments, then as Jan Clifton put it, pigs are us. Pigs are us. That's what the Treasury would be calling future forecasts if the parliamentary opposition were on this side of the House today. Can you imagine? Increases in taxes, capital gains taxes, everything that moves taxes, more borrowing, more spending, more handing out. And we wouldn't be the government spending 50 cents in every dollar. It would go to 55, 60, 70, and the government and the Russians have plenty of evidence that this has never worked. The ACT Party believes that we can do better. Labor introduced $15 billion of completely new spending in their first four budgets. $15 billion! As we were going into a global recession, they would go out and spend more and more and more and borrow more and more and more and tax more. The ACT Party supported coalition government introduction of only $750 million in its first four budgets. This government has only spent an additional $750 million in its first four budgets. We need to reduce expenditure because every dollar the government spends is a dollar taken out of the pockets of a hard-working New Zealander. That's a dollar that could have gone towards a weekly grocery bill. It's a dollar that could go towards a kid's school shoes. It's a dollar that could have been invested in starting up a business, and it's a dollar that could have gone for savings for retirement. But these people want to take all those dollars and they want to distribute it. And it's called middle class welfare, and it doesn't work, and it's unfair. Last year, the government's financial statements recorded that 49.9% of the New Zealand economy was the government. The ACT Party says that is wrong. The ACT Party says we've got to reduce the size of government, reduce the size of the state, get off the backs of the workers, stay out of the lives of business people that create wealth and jobs, and make sure that we give them a fair go. These people opposite believe they know best, and the bottom line is that they believe that they can spend your money much better than you can spend your money. So we say today in this parliament, in this first budget, debate after 12 years into Regnum, Mr Deputy Speaker. Roll back the excesses of working for families. Roll back the election bribe given to our most able earners in the form of student loan interest write-offs. Roll back the pension age to 67, as so many of our trading partners have done and the Retirement Commissioner believes we should do. That would save $1.6 billion a year. Roll back free doctor visits for millionaires and the early childhood education funding that was almost entirely captured by families already using early childhood education. We aspire on this side of the House to a New Zealand where people who work, save, take risks, raise their families, are good citizens and invest are rewarded. That's what we aspire to. We aspire to hard work, savings, risk takings, investment and hard work. Less government spending means more private sector growth and more money left in New Zealand's pockets to reward their hard work. We say to the people opposite, get off the backs of the taxpayers and let them spend their money as they see fit because they've done the hard graft to earn it. It would be a New Zealand where the tax wedge separating effort from reward would be thinner. That tax effort from reward and effort must be thinner. And New Zealanders' pay packets must get thicker. Because I finish as I began, Mr Deputy Speaker. Hardworking New Zealanders can spend their money much better than the Labour Party have ever spent their money. And remember this, any government big enough to give you everything you want is a government big enough to take from you everything you have. The ACT Party supports this budget and we will keep supporting budgets and sensible budgets for the benefits of hard-working New Zealanders. This is a good start in difficult circumstances. I'm glad I'm on this side of the House and these people are not on this side of the House. As I've said before, these ferocious and very, very greedy rabbits, imagine that inside the lettuce patch of the Treasury finances on this day as we go forward, there would be more borrowing, 
There would be more spending. There would be more taxing. There would be no hope. They'd be on the backs of the taxpayers. And the New Zealanders today are glad that this government's in charge of the finances under these difficult circumstances. Sorry to interrupt the honourable member. This time has expired. Mr. Speaker, the must be so proud. Order. Mr. I Speaker. Call the honourable Peter. D